We use it for a few big web development projects, and uh, I'm going to give the next talk a practical introduction to the Qt binding to Python and the OpenGL binding to Python. It's going to be a little session of extreme programming. We are peer programming. You are my peers. I'm behind the keyboard. So we are going to develop a little toy application and see how it goes. OK. So um, first thing that I want to do uh, is not to uh, use too much time. So I'm going to make sure that I have time for questions. Yeah. <laughs> Good. OK. And next, first thing, <laughs> uh, I want to show you a little uh, Python application that uses OpenGL um, to see what can be done. Uh, it should appeal to some people in here since uh, it's a bioinformatics in application. So here it is. Um, it's a viewer for uh, multiple alignments. There we go. So uh, what we see here um, is uh, the quality of the alignment for uh, hate species. Yes, hate species. So uh, this is the genome of the reference species. And uh, here we have the quality of the alignment. When we have a dot, um, it means that we have a match. And when we have a mismatch, we show the letter uh, where the mismatch is. We developed this for a group of bioinformatics researchers at UCAM. Uh, why we developed this and why we use Python? Uh, we use Python because the problem was not well developed. They wanted something, but they didn't really know what they wanted. Uh, and all the other systems to see multiple alignments uh, were not like it. I I'm going to show you what you typically, typically get. Yes. Very, very quickly. Yes. The, the, the problem set of, uh, alignment. Code. Yes. Yes. Sure. Just so we just enough that we have context. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're right. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to get that far. So okay. Um, so, ooh, I don't want to dive too uh, too deep into diamonds, but. Um, so you, you probably know that we can express uh, the genome as a series of uh, the four base pairs. Uh, they are A, C, G, and T. Uh, and we express uh, the genome as a big word. Uh, the problem of the alignment is to see how closely related a genome is to another. So to do that, we basically write um, one genome under the other. Uh, the best that we can do. So we have the longest substrings uh, matching uh, under the, the reference genome. And uh, the multiple alignment is just uh, the, um, the problem of aligning uh, multiple uh, species with a reference genome. Do you think that it's uh... a... Yeah. <laughs> it's close to the cow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Part of us is. Yes. So you're, you're comparing DNA. Yeah, yeah. Of different species. Yes. Uh, and we just want to see uh, what are the big regions that are conserved, that all the, the genomes that we selected keep this, uh, this part of the world the same, and what is moving fast and stuff like that. And so typically, um, what you get when you are looking at the multiple alignment is a, a really broad view of the alignment and where it's good and where it's not good. And uh, it's, you get a small window for uh, a big 20K words long. And then you have 80 pages of stuff like that. So when you want to look at uh, just a small part of it, and you say, oh, this is a really small part that is really well conserved what it is. And, uh, and then you go into databases to see uh, where you find this part uh, elsewhere. Uh, so this representation is really not good for that. 
So we developed uh, this little uh, application to look at, and this little application that is frozen. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, to have a, a good view of the, the whole uh, alignment uh, with different resolutions. So I can have uh, a more compressed view. I can see that uh, here we have something that is moving really, really fast, but here we have a really conserved region, and we can instantly see what it is, and then we can select it as a probe, and then export all the probes to do a search on the database, so uh, this is basically just a few days of work uh, with something with Python and OpenGL. Uh, why OpenGL? Well, OpenGL has a really, really good set of uh, graphic uh, primitives, so we can draw multiple representations because we were not sure what was the best graphical representation for the conservation. It ended up that uh, most people look at the color, so the, the bar plot is not really good. We still added this one for people who are colorblind. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is uh, an example application. I'm sorry, I, I have to leave. I have a train to catch. <laughs> cool. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the stickers. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, so next thing, uh, QT. QT is a... Uh, most of you probably know Qt. So Qt is a multi-platform uh, toolkit to uh, develop graphical applications. Um, here this is a typical uh, pipeline when you develop, you start uh, to sketch uh, your application. Here, we'll add a few buttons. Just one and two, and uh, group your buttons so they keep well proportional. Then you try it. So this is a really dumb window, but we can still uh, have a quick prototype of our application. So let's add a few more things to this. idea of what I want, but I'm open to suggestions. More or less, uh, it's going to be kind of basic because I don't want to, to have a too broad uh, scope and I, I don't want to develop everything from scratch, but uh, if you have suggestions, go ahead. So a basic version of the app that you showed us already? Uh, well, uh, we are not going to, <laughs> to go into something like that, but we are going to do some uh, 3D graphic or programming. Good, so um, QT, uh, the message passing with QT works with signals and slots. So uh, basically every uh, Q object um, can emit signals and uh, receive signals into its slots. So, uh, and when you want to know the signals of an object, uh, use the excellent Qt documentation. So here I have a button, I have a, something that is called a Q slider, and here a Q LCD number. So okay, uh, let's see, for a Q slider, uh, I have a few signals, like uh, value change, interesting, and uh, Right into the designer, I can connect a signal, value change, into a slot, like a display. Going to change here uh, the color. So 
that's it. We uh, all changes on the slider are directly directly reflected on the LCD number. We still have a problem with those buttons. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you, can you generate uh, this, this kind of interface uh, using a text file XML or something like that? Uh, yes, yes, it is XML. Yeah, but instead of uh, playing in, in the designer, mm -hmm. you know, having, uh, for example, if you had the uh, data model, mm -hmm. and you want to generate the, uh, the interface automatically? Yes. Yeah, you can. Yes, definitely. Uh, if, if I save that, and uh, that was my plan, I'm just going to give it a, a name. Uh, uh, but this is not what I wanted to name. Because uh, on the Mac, it's, uh, it's a big problem with the interface builder. There is no uh, the, uh, the user interface uh, resource file. Mm -hmm. They're they're proprietary. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, let, let me show you. Uh, I name my file, save here in my. So uh, it looks like that. It's a really simple XML. Uh, that's much, not much in it. Uh, so it would be really trivial to generate uh, from a data model. Um, okay. It's cross platform? Yes. So it would work on a map? Oh, yeah, definitely. Although it's arguable if you have a script that reads your data model, then we'll ask the question. Oh, yeah. You might just create the GUI dynamically, right? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. You, yeah, you can create the GUI uh, from Python 2. You don't need to use, uh, you, you don't need to have a resource file. You could uh, programmatically create buttons and fit them right into your window. So, is there a way once you have an application built to actually dump the XML file? Uh, that's harder. If you programmatically uh, build the um, yeah. the GUI, yeah, you create. Uh, then to output it as an XML file, can you do that? I don't know. They have a UI loader cube. You can uh, load the UI files uh, at program mode. Yes, and uh, what did the opposite? Yeah, yeah, they, they do have that. Yeah, but I don't think it's built in. You, you would need to, to write some code. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, something, uh, and we fixed the button. Uh, I fixed them uh, while we were talking, but you get the idea. So, um, and uh, how do we bind this uh, interface to Python code? Um, that, that's where it gets interesting, where we call Python functions to react to events. Um, there is something called, uh, Py so if you were to do it, to do this uh, in C++, the native framework work for Qt, you would call UIC that would generate C++ code for uh, this GUI, but here we use PyUIC on this LCD GUI, and it generates Python code. And then we have to uh, use this Python code somehow. So let's add another button. This is the code generating the interface? Uh, sorry? This is the code generating the interface? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I call... Uh, Oh, <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, fun. Is it? <laughs> yes, I didn't plan for that. Enlarge. Like this? Good. Okay, because we still need to look at. Good chunk of code. Uh, so yeah, uh, do you see in the back uh, down there? Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> um.
So uh, when I call PyUIC on this, it dumps uh, the base class for this dialog, and uh, it's uh, the object-oriented way to, to program. Uh, we derive from this class and overload the methods uh, that we are interested in. So, um, Uh, has the, uh, the source code for actually uh, concurrently creating the, the GUI gadget being generated out of the XML file? Yes, or yes. You, you need the XML file for, for the runtime. Okay, uh, so what okay, with this little interface, uh, I generate an XML file. Yeah, that's right. Let, let's look at it. Uh, Okay, so uh, if we take uh, this button, uh, let's call it okay, BTM. Something wrong just happened. I'm sorry uh, if some of you uh, have problem with the flashes. I usually use the visual bell. Uh, okay, so this OK button uh, is a Q push button. So when I uh, ask PyUIC to compile this user interface to Python code, uh, it says, OK, right here I have a widget. It's a, a Q push button. So I need to create uh, an object that is a Q push button. Uh, let's save this generated interface into a file and uh, look at it and I lost my Python node good um, it's quite simple um, we have some OK BTN somewhere here. So uh, that's it. It's just direct translation from the XML. There is no. So XML is just a step in the process, really, right? Yes, yes. It's an intermediate format to yep. represent the GUI you designed. Yes, yes. And then you compile this to make the actual running GUI. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this means you can use Qt to make GUIs in other languages? Yeah, uh, well, uh, originally Qt is made to do GUIs in uh, C++. Okay. So yeah, they, they just hijacked the... Okay. Uh, yeah? Well, it's, it's a separate tool. Right? Okay. Qt, the Qt designer is a tool, tool built, it's built on Qt, it generates the XML file. Yeah. You have a tool that converts that into a C file. To whatever type or of there's another tool, the UI compiler, that generates a Python file. But I think even better than that, you can just load the XML file dynamically. Uh -huh. and this way, you don't even have to restart your program. Right. You can actually, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually keep your program running, and if it loads the file every time, right. it can be in one window the designer, right. you change stuff, and then you just invoke the function that just dynamically reloads your. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a dynamically changing tool. I realized this is an example, but it sort of encourages doing the wrong thing in that intermediate format that you use to design your GUI and then you generate code and then uh, you know modifying files like that by hand. You know, don't do that. People that do that should be shot, but it's not size. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't but, do it. It's sort of yeah, but loading is runtime sort of disables this step right there. So, so just prevents from people from hard coding and stuff. Yeah. Alright, thank you. <laughs> uh, could you create yes. a Q button from a string in Dynamic Uh What do you mean? Like and if you have a, a string, a Python string, yeah. with uh, the name of the class, yes. the object. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, definitely. Okay. So is it something you can do in Python that you cannot do in C plus plus? Oh yeah, the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The Python uh, binding to Qt is a lot more dynamic. Uh, then the C++ one. Uh, I'm going to show you an example uh, a bit later on. Uh, yeah, uh, you, well, uh, in Python, uh, with eval, you can do pretty much anything, but even without resorting to eval, you can, the reflection in Python is just so great that you can do pretty much because everything you want. C++, we don't have access to uh, names of uh, the, the class. Yeah. 
So yeah, uh, yeah, that's why. Um, well, I, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so we have here uh, this toy application, and we want to call some Python code uh, to respond to an action. So I'm going to add a new button that I'm going to call uh, foo btn. And here it's the layout is uh, usually quite tolerant. Uh, you just need to roughly group your stuff. And okay, so I have a new button. Doesn't do anything yet, and I want to call Python code in response to this button action. So uh, again, I save my file. I compile it to Python code. And then I just need a, a little stub to load this file and run my application. So let's do that. Is there problems with the highlighting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I should, I know, but <laughs> my examples were, <laughs> were ready uh, with version 3. Yes, uh, so, uh, like I said, I just derived from this. So uh, I think you are most familiar with Python, but uh, this is the syntax to derive a class. So I create a new class lcdwin that derives from lcdwin. This is a mistake. That derives from lcdgui. Uh, I just create this. Uh, this is the constructor in Python. I'm not really sure uh, what the constructor receives, and I'm not really interested uh, by that either. So I just skip. You don't need keywords. I don't need? I don't think so. Well, uh, so suppose that I am not sure. <laughs> so you can just uh, forward everything that you receive to some other method. And I just call my parent constructor. And then I do the interesting stuff. So um, what we just did uh, in the GUI thing with the, the connector tool to connect uh, signals to stuff, uh, we can do that with the connect function. Uh, that receives uh, an object, a signal, and then a receiver object and the slot. Uh, in Python, it's more dynamic. You can connect a signal to any callable function. So I'm going to connect from my uh, FooBTN the signal that you need the correct syntax. Well, I pretty much know it, but. Uh, QBTN. Uh, it's a QPush, but yeah. It has a signal. Is it has no signal? Clicked. Hmm? Clicked. Clicked. Where, it's where, where? Lower, lower. Lower, lower. Oh, it's in the abstract class. It's one up. Yeah. yeah. It's in Q button, right? The Just type clicked, you'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> Just go up. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you see that pure programming works. Uh, okay. So this is really uh, 
the Qt way of. Actually, this is gone in the new version. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, in C++, uh, they do it that way because they cannot introspect. So they use uh, a preprocessor for the C++ files uh, that uses the string, and this is a macro that can easily be parsed. So I need to pass the signal name, and then to map it to uh, some function that I don't know yet. Uh, let's write a function that will respond to our button. Uh, more or less. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm uh, writing uh, the response for the button. So, so uh, this part is mostly boilerplate code. You will not go in the XML. <coughs> ah, uh, no, definitely not. If you were using the XML file dynamically, instead of importing LCD GUI, you would have a line of code somewhere. Mm -hmm. It says load this file, and then you would get the class of the window we created, and uh, and some other class, and then you can just instantiate that as many times as you like. Does that make sense? You wouldn't be important. You'd be loading that, and if you get the class object, and then you would create it. Uh, yeah, you you. There's a lot of things that you can do. So uh, so I just uh, created a new function. I connected this function to the click signal of the foo button. And right now, I just need another bit of boilerplate code. Boilerplate code uh, I'm going to reuse. Let's see. You didn't see that. LCD. In Okay, uh, so, so we need an application that will load everything and launch the main window. So uh, it's always a queue application. It receives the command line argument. Uh, we set the main window to this application. It can have more than one window. And then we show the window and uh, we give the execution control to the application. Fairly simple. So now we have uh, this button that prints print. Uh, yeah. It prints print. Um, from Python. So this is basically uh, the way to, to bind uh, events from the user interface to Python code. In the new version, you don't have to do connect. You can just name, instead of saying foo, you say on foo clicked, mm -hmm. and it will automatically bind it for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the three lines go with a connect uh, call, you don't need it at all. What do you mean a new version of PyQt? Uh, in Qt4, there's a, a binding for Python uh, and Qt4. So this is using Qt3. So with Qt4, uh, you can do away with those. But in the C++ code, it still looks the same, right? That's how you connect. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. But in the Python code, it's easier. Yeah, actually, there's a C++ function in version 4 that does it too. But Python has it, and uh, the C++ function is a little limited. It will bind only on the same object. So basically, it, looks, it, takes, a, it takes your class, and then it looks for methods that would match patterns that correspond to on uh, widget name, signal name. And then, so, but you can have a function, uh, and if anybody wants it, I can be happy to share it. You, you could say, find all the signals from this object from, um, so all the, you give it an object that has a bunch of widgets that has attributes, and then you give it another object that you want to connect the signals to. And just by searching the names, you can have it automatically respond to it. Uh, yeah, it's the the mock preprocessor. So yeah, yeah, there, there's a step. Uh, you need to transform the. Yeah. 
problem is that you can only start with a proper class, and here you can take an instance and bind to an instance, right? For instance. Oh. Yeah, so. So um, let's say we want to pop a, a window when the button is clicked. Uh, we look for the documentation of message box. And the, um, the Qt binding is really a clean translation. Uh, the Python binding to Qt is really a clean translation. Uh, you can just use a Qt assistant, the documentation for the C++ version of Qt. And it translates uh, directly to Python code. So Q message box uh, to have an information dialog, uh, I just need to pass the parent, a Q widget, and a caption and a text. Let's use that. So it's a static, uh, a static method from the the, mess the Q message box message box class. And uh, I pass. Uh, self, that is a Q widget. No need to recompile, we are in Python. Just close this guy and we run. And we have a a little uh, pop-up. So this is uh, basically uh, what we do. We just uh, bind and connect uh, events to uh, Python code. So um, yeah, let's jump right into OpenGL. So I, I wanted to start the OpenGL thing from scratch, but uh, while I was doing it, to get to something interesting, it required quite a bit of boilerplate code. So uh, I'm going to get to something pre-done. This doesn't exist. You've not seen it. OK, um, so what we have here, the, there are a few things that are always there, or mostly, uh, in an OpenGL applic application, you need uh, to somehow initialize uh, your view pane, whether you want uh, an orthographic view or a, a projection that will do the perspective. And um, every time you redraw, uh, you need to update uh, your position in the view pane. So OK, this is where I do this, um, well, I, I won't get into the, the boilerplate OpenGL code. Um, so this is uh, how I compute my, uh, my field of view. And um, this is really simple uh, drawing with Open, OpenGL. So it's always like that. Uh, you start with a GL begin, and then something that you, you want to draw. And uh, you place the vertices for uh, whatever you are drawing. So in this case, a triangle. So I place the three vertices of the triangle. And OpenGL will fill this shape uh, with my GL color that is set uh, just over there. So here, uh, I have a triangle. I have a quad and uh, a little pyramid uh, with blended vertices. So uh, I'm going to reuse uh, some bits of code here. OK, and uh, yeah, this is the. So it's a, a really simple uh, GUI. Uh, here we have, we need to derive from the GL uh, widget. So show you. Here uh, we have, so this stuff with lots of boilerplate code 
is a, a subclass of the Qt OpenGL widget. Uh, we need to overload the, the initialization method and the paint GL method. So, so this one, we need to do a custom widget that overrides those methods. And then in Qt Designer, we add a new custom widget style. Oh, we are. <laughs> okay, I'm speeding up. Um, we add a new custom widget. Uh, it's really easy to, and uh, it's a, uh, here this one, a new custom widget. Here we have the viewer widget that I used um, in the viewer, the first application that I showed, that I've showed you. This is going to show you here. So you just add your new uh, custom widget. When you edit your, no, your uh, toolbox, no. when you edit your custom widgets, uh, you can just, just say um, where to get the code for the custom widget. Uh, when it's Python code, you just say uh, it's Python code. Usually for custom widgets, you pass the header file for C++. <laughs> uh, so you, pa you pass the .h. Uh, and there is a little catch you need to, in order to use it in Python, uh, I don't want to say that. You need to, to pass here a Python and you can add a, pretty much anything you want here. So PyUIC will parse this part of the comment and include it in your Python code when you call PyUIC. So uh, here I have this little uh, really, really simple application. I just modified my app. And here we have it. Uh, we have a triangle. Uh, a square and a, a little pyramid that with a really strange perspective. <laughs> and um, yes, uh, I'll show you that. I overloaded the, um, the wheel event. So when we receive a wheel event, uh, I take the delta from the event. For some reason, the delta is in a strange unit that each time you send a click of the wheel, it sends uh, 100 or something like that. So I divide that to have a, a much finer grained uh, resolution. So, and uh, I just update my, uh, my Z position. And Z position is uh, used when I change my position uh, here in the, the view pane. Uh, I use it here, here, reset pass. So I just translate with uh, those two never change. And I just change uh, here my Z. So I can zoom in and out. And I can uh, rotate these guys. OK. And uh, there was. So that's pretty much uh, how you use OpenGL uh, in Python. So this is really boring. Uh, we just uh, manually uh, draw the vertices. So uh, what I wanted to do was to uh, import some, uh, some model that I did with Blender. So I'm going to skip most of the modeling part with Blender, but uh, just show you uh, models that I already have. Okay, so uh, this is a really simple model with Blender. Uh, doing a, a tutorial on how to use Blender uh, is really beyond the scope of this presentation. Uh, the UI is uh, quite efficient once you know it, but the <laughs> there is a, a really, really steep learning curve uh, to get proficient with Blender. Uh, but just for the sake of it, uh, I'm going to hack this cube. Uh, select 
here. Uh, I'm going to select those. Okay, so you are. You will know that I'm not cheating. Um, and then, like that, select this one, and like that. So uh, I just edited some basic editing with my model. Uh, Blender is uh, completely scripted in Python. Uh, so if I go to export this, um, most of the export scripts are Python, uh, Python code. And uh, Blender exports a really, really nice Python API. So if you use the Blender uh, gaming engine, you can script everything in Python. Uh, everything that is in Blender, you can control from Python. And uh, here I'm going to show you a custom import script uh, from Blender. And uh, it's really, really simple to use Blender from Python. So uh, you just need to import the Blender module and then um, Blender.mesh.get gives you a list of meshes. So, uh, so these two are meshes. Um, meshes are just a bunch of uh, edges and uh, faces. Uh, there are other things in Blender like um, smooth, uh, smooth solids and uh, stuff like that that are not easy to draw in OpenGL because meshes is really easy. It's just faces and you draw the faces. Um, for the others, it would, it would be more complicated. So I just export the meshes uh, here. So, uh, so this is really, really simple as an export script. So um, for all the mesh in my meshes, I just print a map. So I map the export face function. So, and uh, I map this to the list of faces in my um, in my mesh. Um, I need to change that a bit because it was optimized to do one mesh and uh, now I want to do them all. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to, to, to do something. So I'm just going to dump the, the list of meshes. Uh, then I need to Look good. Okay. Okay. Then uh, to call a script, there there are a few ways to call a script fr from Blender. You see, pure programming works. Yes. Below. What what? <laughs> yes. And that is, and it's yes, 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 it's here. Right? Yeah, it is. No, 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 export mesh. Yes? The end that faces is not, the end, the reference end is oh, not oh. mesh. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, so yeah, there are a few ways to call a script from Blender. Uh, we use the quick and easy way. That is, call Blender with the name of your model. 
and uh, the name of your script. And we should have a dump. Ooh. Maybe not. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> that So um, what is really nice in Python is that uh, you have really great uh, reflection. So uh, instead of digging in, into the documentation to get the object that you want, it's documentation, you can just uh, pick the object because you know really well where to get this object and ask for its documentation. So uh, yes, here it's uh, the object first and the file that I, where I want to dump. should I have a dump. Good. So I'm going to load this dump uh, no. into my from a file. Yes. And then I need to use that. I'm almost ready for that. have just done. Uh, I, so I just load uh, the list of meshes. For all the meshes, I uh, I uh, loop on all the faces, and then I just draw a polygon with all the, the vertices. with the centering of all those meshes, but yeah, <laughs> that did, we didn't record the, the position. But uh, so, so, so uh, what we need now would be to uh, add some lighting, because without light, uh, we don't really get the, the perspective effect. But uh, I think that I just show you that uh, it's fairly easy to do some 3D programming with Python. Uh, we just started from mostly from scratch, and yeah, that's it. <laughs>